I can now with great comfort and I can be perfectly at ease to say that I am an artist, a full-time artist in my own studio and I'm absolutely immersed in it and enriched by it and I'm so grateful for it. I'm just like so grateful for it. I, um, in past years, was a teacher, started teaching little, little children and I was absolutely devoted to teaching them not just the processes of art and exposing them to the materials of art, but also exposing them to art history and, and to abstract art and to modern art and to historical art from different cultures around the world. And I think it really was a secret way for me to educate myself because <laughs> I was learning so much. I didn't have formal education in the visual arts. I'd been a musician as a kid in school. And, um, but somehow those little kids opened that world to me. And I, I went on, you know, f to teach older children and to teach at the university. And I always took on the subject of art uh, when given the opportunity no matter what group of people I was working with. Because I knew, I just intuitively knew, I couldn't always put it into words, but I in intuitively knew, and I knew from observation of them, that it was life enhancing, that it was joyful, that their brains were involved, their hands were involved. It was such a whole person experience that I just was always devoted to it. Now, as a as a young girl and then growing into womanhood, I, I sewed and I love cloth and I love fabric. That was, that was the medium that was available to a woman growing up in, in those years. I mean, I could, I could cook and I could garden and I could sew. Those were the things that were available to me. And so I, I had those things in my life as creative and artistic pursuits. One might say those were my practice but I never had my own studio practice. I actually didn't even dare to pick up a paintbrush outside of the classroom. This is my encaustic station. Encaustic is oil paint pigment mixed with beeswax. It's beautiful because you can see the color without getting anything gooky out of the tube. There it is in all its beauty. I could spend a week in here doing nothing but mixing color and I like um, neutralized color with saturated color. So with the encaustic, I can make little tiny tubs of color and play with them. I can put them out and get a color palette right away, you know, and for me, that is just like glorious, fun. glorious fun. Most of, the, <laughs> most of this, one. this is in really I think the green one might be finished. That's cold wax and oil. What I love about that is you can get really textured areas and really smooth areas and that interplay of texture and like for me as a textile artist, it's like silk and silk noil, which is nubbly, yes, yes. right? And the putting them together, because mm. cold wax and oil, like because it's so thick you don't paint with brushes. You no. paint with squeegees and brayers. So before the paint came in here, I was always silk screening. I go back and forth. I've got oil and cold wax. I've got encaustic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will spend days just with some acrylic paint and, and then I start going, oh, Jesus, does that ever look good on that piece of fabric? Yeah. Um, oh, you know, how does that translate over there? Yeah. I didn't think I liked turquoise. Okay, well, you know, all that goes on for me. People think they have to have the idea and then translate it into some kind of visual language. Yes. But it's the mucking about with visual. That is. That, that something in the doing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've been in here working and been moved to absolute tears because I've had a memory of an experience from when I was like eight years old. And I thought, oh, that's what that was all about. And right. who knows why that came to me in the moment of a particular color yeah. or a particular passage of elements together. Hey, I've paid yeah. for lots of personal counseling yeah. over the years. Oh, okay. This is way better. Right? Yeah. <laughs>